Hello, everyone. My name is Rick Morgan, and I like to talk about pressing and cleaning comic books online. I've been doing it for quite a while, and I'm the the owner and uh, you know uh, CEO of Immaculate Comics. Make and sell products to help help people do that. Uh, because of my role, I get asked a lot of questions about the paper aging mechanisms, and also I get asked about the best storage systems for preserving comic books. I also often get told by others what is the best method, their opinion, uh, for storage systems and why. So I gather a lot of information from technical reports, my own experience, and also from uh, others in the community and sort of balancing, you know, opinion versus fact. I have a pretty good idea, I think, of what's the best way to preserve and improve comic books and, and why. Because there are a lot of topics to consider, and they all have different degrees of complexity, uh, I'd like to divide this into a series of 11 uh, total videos in three different uh, categories. And those categories will be uh, what I'm calling standard knowledge, or what might, might be like an associate's degree, maybe all that most people ever need to see. That's going to be the standard knowledge will, will consist of how long will paper last, Generally, a comic, especially comic book paper before it disintegrates to ashes and dust. Do plastic bags preservation techniques help and how and why? Uh, airtight sealing, is it better or worse? Are CGC slabs any better than polypro bags or worse? Are they okay? That's the main the main body of the first four videos. Incidentally, I'm sort of stranded here in Germany the next two days before I can go home. So it gives me a little bit of time to work on this. Um, then I'm going to do a nerdy deep dive, what I'm calling the, the, you know, the bachelor's degree level. Maybe we'll even have exams and give out little degrees for this. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, so I would like to talk about the degree of polymerization, which they call DP in the paper world, versus uh, tensile strength paper. I like how strong is the paper. Um, this, this is the like the primary thing you lose in the, the aging process. I also like to talk about hydrolysis of cellulose and lignin, the two main components of paper. I like to talk about the differences between the protective, you know, containers. There's mylar, polypro. There's also polyethylene, which I don't really recommend it. Also, I won't talk about it. And then there's the CGC inner well material. Then I want to talk about what are the optimum solutions, what I would think are like the pros and cons of different storage solutions. The last, the last part of it is what I'm going to call the mathematical modeling or what I'll call the graduate degree series. And uh, this will be another series of hopefully long, these will be longer videos. The first ones will be shorter for people who really want to deep dive more. And I guess if, there aren't enough people interested in the first two segments. I, I probably won't do this final segment because it will take a long time. It'd be a lot of work. If no one watches it or cares, then of course I won't, I won't produce it, which is fine. I'll talk about uh, moisture dependent hydrolysis kinetics. So this is, you know, the, the moisture, the, the relative humidity versus the temperature and the pH. And what does the kinetics or the, the rate of these reactions, how fast do they go? I'll discuss polymer relaxation and creep mechanisms, right? So what that means is uh, how do you, what is the paper creasing and reversion mechanisms by which paper can be bent and then flattened and what makes it stay, stay flat? And why does it go back to being bent even though it appears flat? Those, those mechanisms will be discussed and modeled. And the last one will be uh, fixed diffusion modeling of mylar fixes was a, famous diffusion, I'll say chemist, some people might say physicist. Um, he did a lot of modeling of diffusion, so we use his laws. We model mylar versus polypro versus CGC well. We'll see what is the permeability of these different materials, their, their properties, uh, versus their thickness, or what we call the path length. Um, what is their permeability per path length for water and oxygen? And we'll model that. So that'll be the series, and all right. So let's can let's continue with video one here, and it will say the first question is how long can comic book paper last?
before it turns to dust and completely disintegrates? Well, the answer is, short answer is many decades, sometimes even centuries, if the conditions aren't terrible. And for comic books, the conditions have were often terrible, both because of the quality of the paper and because of their of how they were stored in the early age, the you know the early ages, the golden ages, the silver age, that changed when comic books became uh, you know more popular and more valuable in the, the you know the Bronze Age on that sort of did change a lot, especially after 1980. Um, so the long the longer answer is it depends on the four uh, antagonists to paper, the four villains of paper, if you will. There, the acidity or the, the pH of the paper, the, the lignin, the mater, one of the materials in the paper, oxygen from atmosphere, also will count pollutants in this later, and humidity, moisture. So some paper chemistry basic comic books, especially from the 1930s to the late 1970s, were made of two primary components. They were cellulose fibers. This is the stronger material. And they were made of lignin. This is the uh, what I'll call the time bomb material in paper that uh, doesn't contribute to the strength. It's a, basically a, f- a filler product, and it, it yellows and oxidizes over time, and also carries acid on it. Um, the, the also have residual acids from the pulping and bleaching process. These these residual acids slowly hydrolyze. The cellulose hydrolyze or hydro, hydrolyzing cellulose is called hydrolysis. In the case of paper, it's called uh, cellulolysis. So it's cellulolysis specifically, but when we say hydrolysis, we mean cellulolysis. And in, in low and in high pH conditions, but we're primarily concerned with low pH conditions, the acidic conditions, hydrolysis is a chemical reaction that takes place in the presence of water and it goes faster in the presence of um, hydrogen ions, which is the thing that makes things that we're measuring when we measure pHs. pH gets lower, it has more hydrogen ions, H pluses. This is um, this reaction uh, mechanism, the speed of this reaction uh, requires water to, to happen, the breakdown of paper. And it's often catalyzed by specific metals, in, in particular iron, that can often be present in. Um, the paper itself. Iron also, importantly, is, is often a source of foxing and old paper, which we isn't really generally a part of this series, but maybe I should put it in there. Um, so those break down the stronger cellulose fibers into shorter glucosides or glucose sugar pieces. There's a bunch of them. And yes, it's the same sugar from that you're thinking of as part of uh, because it's part of sugar, uh, maltose, dextrose, all of those. It's the same stuff. Um, paper is also made of filler and sizing agents. These vary by area for publisher, but from, I think, 1870 or 80 uh, to 1980, so about 100 years, uh, clay was uh, 5 to 10% of all fillers in paper. It's a hydrophobic and inert, meaning it keeps, keeps water out and it uh, doesn't react with many things. Um, you can put it in the paper or just on the surface of the paper. Uh, either way, uh, there's more of it in the cover than the interior pages. And internal uh, to the paper, it's always internal, was a, a sizing agent. Uh, the sizing is, is a rosin material left over from tree sap most often. And they used alum, aluminum products. Uh, this helps the paper, gives it strength, helps it lay flat, uh, makes, and it also helps ink to stick uh, to the paper. So these fillers and sizing agents were, could also be acidic. So the, uh, the clay, uh, not so much, uh, but the clay can lose its properties of being hydrophobic and giving strength over time. Uh, the rosin could uh, definitely come with acid. It has carboxylic acid groups on the end of it, which would help degrade paper. And it what well, did in the past. Uh, and the alum is even, well, alum is not strictly acidic in itself. It, it absorbs, it takes, it's not the classic 
acid. It's the, the Bronsted lori acid, they call it. It is a different acid in the fact that it, it consumes hydroxide ions, OH minuses, which leaves the balance of the water uh, more acidic because water dissociates into H's and OH minuses, uh, making it neutral if they dissociate equally. But if you remove the OH minuses, the H pluses remain, makes the water um, acidic. Uh, therefore, that's how those uh, the alum and the rosin contribute to the slow demise of your paper. Once these acids start, uh, I say breaking cellulose chains, but it's a complex mechanism. They, they assist in the process of breaking cellulose chains by acid hydrolysis. The fibers weaken. Uh, they're not as flexible. They're more embrittled at this point. And the pages go from uh, uh, delicate to uh, snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> Right, they, they crack and break. Uh, the edges of books, uh, edges of paper, are have uh, more exposure to oxygen than the center of the paper does, just because there's air coming in from the edges as well as the outside edge, and so you get what we call marvel chipping there because of it's more evident in those sections. So the question is, uh, how long until my comic books turn to dust? Uh, well. Assuming you have a terrible or storage conditions, you've done nothing at all to preserve them. I'm talking a higher heat, uh, relatively high humidity or changing humidity. The, the oscillation of humidity can um, also be bad. Uh, you have light on them, uh, sunlight, uh, and you're exposed to oxygen and pollutants. Uh, about 40 to 70 years, the pages will get brittle. They'll tan, turn tan to brown, the edges will chip. 80 to 100 years, High lignin content paper will fragment when handled even slightly. Uh, and actual dust, it's unlikely to turn, I think, the actual dust. But they'll become so friable that they crumble when flexed or handled even, even a small amount. So that would be the worst condition. So let's say 80 years is when we're getting... Worst case scenario, we start that, and we're 2025 at the time of this recording, so it's made in 1945 or approaching that age. These are, you know, worst case scenarios. Um, but before we can, you know, panic too much, you can note that almost all modern, in fact, say all modern books really, uh, have been stored properly, and a lot of golden age books and many Silver Age books have been since they were first printed um, stored in a safer way and not in those conditions. So they will not spontaneously uh, poof into dust like a vampire. Uh, uh, but uh, there is a clock. There is a countdown clock and we'll talk about um, how long we can make them last and and why, and why that is and, and what those mechanisms are. So anyway, we'll look for that uh, video next. I hope this helps.